Hey guys, welcome to Digital Srini channel on YouTube. And if you haven't already subscribed to this channel, this is a great time to do that. And if you have already subscribed, just a quick note to you guys, you probably see videos on this channel on uh, Mondays and Wednesdays. Just a quick note that on uh, the videos that you see on Wednesdays are the regularly scheduled videos and I schedule them weeks ahead of time and uh, I wish I could change those. If I change that schedule, then uh, other things get upset. I know some topics are very near and dear to you and you can't wait to watch the next video, but unfortunately, uh, YouTube, at least uh, I can't figure out how I can take a link from an existing scheduled video and share with only my subscribers. I'll probably figure that out someday. But please note that on Wednesdays, I have these regularly scheduled videos on specific topics such as Brat's segmentation, how to do uh, satellite image segmentation or some other topical uh, you know based uh, applications for example and the videos on Mondays are the ones that uh, I usually release them under the name Python Tips and Tricks. And these are, think of them as my answer to some of your questions in the comments box. Sometimes I see a theme for these questions and I thought, okay, maybe I should record a video, but I, uh, I should release the video right away and not schedule this for two or three months from now like I normally do with my regularly scheduled videos. So these are the quick ones and I hope you found these, find these to be useful. If so, hit the like button so I answer your questions in short videos like these. So one of the themes, one of the questions I uh, typically see is about transfer learning and there seem to be some misunderstanding in terms of transfer learning in general. Can you apply transfer learning for large images? Can you apply transfer learning for images with different number of channels? Hey, uh, you want to take VGG16 and you want to apply to grayscale images but it throws an error what do you do with that how do you deal with that or you're working with multi-spectral or uh, multi-channel uh, images where you have like nine or ten uh, channels but most of the pre-trained networks are all three channels so how do you apply if that uh, is something you relate to then of course this video hopefully will shed some light into it so let's go ahead and proceed with uh, a quick discussion and then jump into the code Starting with, again, uh, just to make sure we are all on the same page, what a transfer learning is. Of course, uh, I'm going to use VGG16 as an example and look at the convolutional neural network. What do we mean by that? You have a bunch of convolutional layers and then at the end you have a uh, few dense layers and finally the output layer with how many ever nodes uh, uh, depending on your final number of classes in your, in your uh, data set. So as you see, when you go from one convolution layer to the next convolution layer, you're applying a convolutional operation. I keep using the term convolution many, many times. So we better understand what a convolution means in a second. But as you can see, these blue are all the convolutional layers here, and the red is max pooling. Max pooling is basically you're just uh, applying a patch and saying, okay, give me the maximum pixel value from within that patch or a kernel. And then that is, uh, that is, going, that is the value you're going to take. And that de obviously decreases the size of your image and you're progressively decreasing all the way to a small uh, vector or a small tensor size down here. And then you flatten this into a uh, into an array into into a one-dimensional vector, and then you connect those fully connected layers, and eventually you get uh, your output layer. Again, this is the basics, but I just want to highlight one aspect here: convolutional layers. What do we mean by this? And this is very important, believe me, to understand transfer learning and the limitations of transfer learning when it comes to multi-channel and different size images. So a convolution operation, as you probably know, you have an image and this image, uh, let's say in this case, you have different pixel values and you have a kernel of three by three size is very common in our convolutional layers, right? In VGG16, we use three by three. So something of this sort, it has a bunch of numbers. How do we put these numbers? This is where the training comes into picture. In fact, when you are doing machine learning training on convolutional layers, what you're doing is trying to figure out exactly what these values within each of this box, box needs to be for that specific kernel. We call them weights, each of these numbers as weights. So in a convolution operation, you have a kernel of size n by n, in this example, three by three, and you apply that onto your image. How do you apply that? It's a three by three kernel, you apply that three by three on a three by three patch. So on your image, you're just doing a simple multiplication and summation. So it's minus one times 170 plus zero times 245 
plus one times zero and so on you add all of these and you get a value that specific value you're replacing the central pixel with this so instead of 42 you replace that with 394 so obviously what values you use inside this kernel definitely uh, define how your output image is going to look like so think of this image that you're seeing on the right hand side as a filtered image of your input image by applying this specific kernel so once that kernel is applied on three by three it moves on to the next one and to the next one and how by how much it actually moves on your image this is called stride we saw stride equals to one stride equals to two stride equals to three means it's just jumping from here to the next one without any overlap so hopefully you understand what a uh, what a convolution operation is it involves a kernel with some specific values now what happens if that kernel for example in this case this kernel has a value of minus one minus two minus one you see how the zeros are in vertical and here zeros are horizontal so this is an x direction kernel i'm just giving you a specific example this is a y direction kernel and these two are kernels that fall into something called sobel edge detection if you don't know what this is you shouldn't be doing deep learning you should be going back to the basics understanding image processing and then continue deep learning i've seen many many people jump directly into deep learning and you copy some code from somewhere like keras or something and then put together it works and uh, and and uh, you tend to call yourself a machine learning engineer sorry for this negative talk but you're you're fooling yourself when you do that go ahead uh, go back to the basics understand numpy understand pandas understand the basic image processing filters what is a sobel edge detection what is a canny edge detection what is a gaussian filter if you don't know that then none of this will make any difference in fact you'll be more confused when you do these type of uh, uh, activities later on sorry for a quick detour in terms of uh, lecturing you guys uh, but let's get back so this is a sobel edge detector and obviously as the name suggests it's designed to take an input image and provide us with uh, highlighted edges and you can use this to you know do other tasks and all that but this is a uh, uh, this is a feature generator. Think of this as a feature extractor. So one of the kernels as part of your deep learning could eventually end up looking like this because that definite uh, specific model thinks that edge, edges are important to classify whatever you're trying to classify, right? So as you can see, the, why am I showing you this again? Because you'll realize that this kernel size and the image size let me get back the image size has nothing to do with the kernel size it doesn't matter if your image is 224 by 224 like in vgg 16 or if it is like 1024 by 2024 2048 by 24 it does not matter this specific kernel can be applied onto your image with a stride of whatever the stride you pick and then you get an output so this kernel uh, works no matter what size image you have. Of course, it will be slow if your image is humongous because it has to do a lot more operations, but it will work. So one quick lesson here, a pre-trained model will definitely work no matter what your input size is. If it is 224, it doesn't matter. You can just take uh, the trained weights and apply that on any new images of different sizes why because during the training process it's not the image size that matters it's the kernel size that matters as long as your kernel is three by three in that specific convolution layer it definitely works fine no matter what your input image is i hope this makes sense because during the training process the weights get updated what are weights nothing but these values minus one minus two zero this is basically what weights are so let's get a quick understanding of our convolutional uh, network so here again this is the vgg16 as you may uh, some of you may realize and you see here the size of the image is 224 and as you up, uh, apply the pooling operation the size of the image goes down but the kernel size here is 3 by 3 3 by 3 3 by 3 and throughout the vgg network it's 3 by 3 it can be 5 by 5 if you go to inception or something you'll probably see 5 by 5 but as long as this remains the same between the pre-trained model and your new model that you're trying to train then uh, then you can go ahead and transfer the weights and the weights can be three by three something that looks like this and initially when you start with a brand new model where you randomly assign weights these weights are uh, 
again, there are strategies in terms of how to assign these weights. But our discussion right now is to define a model, define a model like VGG, and then transfer the weights so you can use that on your own images. Yeah, so let's stay focused on that uh, task. So now that you understand this, let's go ahead and print out our model. So this is the VGG16 with an input size of 224 by 224 by three, three channels. Again, remember here, this three by three convolution is applied onto your image of size 224 by 224. By three means you have to multiply that by three times because this kernel has to be applied three times. So you have that many more weights. So this definitely does depend upon how many channels you have, but not on your X and Y or height and width dimensions of your input image. Okay, I hope that makes sense. So this specific kernel of three by three is for your channel number zero. And then you have channel number one and you have channel number two. For each of these, you have three by three kernel. So if your input image size changes in terms of number of channels, then you cannot use a pre-trained model. I'll show you how to use it in a minute. But you cannot just take a pre-trained VGG16 and say, okay, go ahead and apply to my, because you may have only one channel or you may have nine channels, but the number of channels should match. The X and Y, the height and width doesn't matter. Okay, now with that information, let's look at uh, the VGG16 model uh, with an input of 224 by 224 by three. So look at the first convolution layer. By the way, the one that gets affected when you change the number of channels is only the first convolution layer. Again, I'll show you that when we get to the code part, but I wanna make sure you understand that aspect. So as long as you take care of that, then you're fine. So in this example, let's go ahead and see, it says there are 1792 parameters. Why are there 1792 parameters? Why? It's pretty simple. You have a size of 224 by 224, three by three convolution, 64. So let's just start by three by three kernel. What does that mean? You have nine weights, right? That's pretty straightforward. You have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine weights right there, but not just nine. If you have three channels, then more than that. But let's, again, look at this methodically. 64 right there, 64. So let's multiply our nine by 64. You have 576 weights. Not just that, you have three channels. So 576 times three is 1728. So the actual weights that need to be trained are 1728, but in addition to weight for each of these filters, you have a bias associated with it. So you have 64 filters, 64 biases, 1728 plus 64 equals to 1792. That's exactly why you have that many parameters. Now, what happens if your input is uh, three by three by, uh, sorry, 224 by 224 by one, not a three channel image, but a one channel image. Then it changes to 640 up here. The number of trainable parameters, why? Again, let's do the same math, three by three, nine weights, 64 filters times nine, 576. We had exactly the same before, right? You had exactly, the, sorry, sorry for my animation, 576 right there. But here you have only one channel here in a one channel image. So you have 576, uh, total 576 weights, that's it. And when you add 576 and 64 biases, you get 60, uh, 640, and that's exactly what you see here. The key lesson I want you to learn here is that when you change the number of channels, of course, the number of trainable weights change, but only for the first layer. I'll go back and forth, keep an eye on all the remaining uh, uh, weights and biases or trainable weights right there, parameters right there. You see, let me go back, forward, back, forward everything identical. The only thing that changes is in the first convolution layer because that's what gets connected to the input layer. So if you take care of weights right there, you can import weights from all the other channels and then you can use transfer learning. So let's see how we can do that for a single channel image and also for multi-channel where we have, let's say nine different channels. So let's jump into the code. Okay, and I am going to share the code with you, so don't worry about writing things down or anything. Again, there will be a slight delay in sharing code and sharing the video because code gets uploaded a few hours later, but don't panic, it will surely be there uh, if it's not there right now. Uh, okay, uh, let's jump in. So first of all, let's focus on VGG16. So what I'm gonna do is two different things. One, first of all, import VGG16 from my Keras.applications and also put the VGG16 together so I can show you certain things. So first let's go ahead and import these libraries. 
and nothing nothing uh, new right there and i added a lot of text so it makes sense for you you don't have to come back to this video for explanation uh, although i appreciate more views but uh, it makes your life easy if you just read through this uh, uh, comments okay let us uh, define of course now that i imported vgg16 i could just go ahead and uh, uh, import my vgg16 uh, right there i'm sure most of you know that but first let's go ahead and uh, define vgg16 ourselves with our own hands so we know exactly how uh, uh, things are structured and how things uh, uh, how at least the input layer can look different so first of all i'm using my sequential method dense convolution max pool 2d and flatten layers i'm not importing dense or anything uh, because we are not putting together an entire in fact let's do that let us go ahead because i want to show you how dense layers how most of the weights by the way trainable parameters are in the dense layers believe it or not okay let us go ahead and import all of these and by the way uh, VCC16 is defined in multiple blocks, like block one, two, three, four, and five. Five blocks of convolution uh, layers. And you see each one, uh, each block has two convolutions, max pool, two convolution, max pool, and the next one, three convolutions, max pool. So this is right out of their paper. So if I go ahead and uh, uh, let me do this because I wanted to show you something. If I go ahead and look at the model.summary, and let me create some room on the right hand side and let my CUDA take care of certain things and let me open some space. Okay, so how many parameters are there? 14 million, 713, 536. Oh, sorry, let me change this to input size of three, three channels. Let us change this again. And it should be 14, 7, 1, 4, 6, 8, 8 parameters. And if I go down and if I do exactly the same using my VGG16 that I imported from Keras, I should get an identical number of parameters. My input is 224 by 224 by 3. And for this model, I'm uh, using my VGG16 that I imported up here, right, from, from our Keras. And we are going to load the weights where it got trained on ImageNet. Right now, here, there are no weights. Well, there are random weights, sorry. Uh, using, I believe, he normal. I forgot what the default is for Keras, but they're randomly assigned. But the whole point of transfer learning is we don't want random weights. We want weights where it's already trained on ImageNet or whatever the other data set is. So here, it's, uh, these are the weights from ImageNet and uh, I'm uh, in, in, input shape is right there. So if I print the model summary, I should see identical number of parameters. You see 14714688 from this model. And if I go back up, 14714688 from the model I put together with my own hands. <laughs> okay. I'm not just showing that uh, this is awesome. I, I just want to make sure, okay, we do have VGG16 here. Now let's go ahead and include the additional layers and see how many how many uh, total parameters are there, uh, you know, trainable parameters you'll see. So now I have 134 million. Previously, we had 14 million. <laughs> if I can find that. Previously, we had 14.7 million. Now we have 134 uh, million parameters. Most of those coming from, obviously, the dense layers right there. You can change the size of the dense, but anyway, you can see how dense layers, uh, as you go down the, as you go down, the model, the number of trainable parameters increase. Okay, now let us uh, focus on what we wanted to focus on to begin with, which is now let's go ahead and remove the dense layer. Oh, there is a reason why I wanted to increase, uh, include the dense layer. Um, let us, uh, uh, let's, I'll en enable that later. And let's go ahead and clean this part up so we can focus. I really wanted this video to be only 15 minutes, but I started to realize this is going to be very long, but I hope you all appreciate the content. So let us go back to basics. So what am I doing? So this is my VGG model, basically with an input of 224 by 224 by three. Okay, we all understand that. 
right. And if you look at the input parameters, 1792, we just did the math for that. And if I change this to one, the number of parameters here will not change and only in the top layer changes. And we, I already showed you that as part of the presentation, but I wanna make sure you understand that you realize that right here, you see the number of parameters 640, but everything else remains the same. So we still have 14, seven, uh, some, some uh, right here. What if I have dense layers, okay? And let's go back to my three right here. And now let's go ahead and look at the number of trainable parameters in dense layers, first of all. Here, uh, let's take a screenshot so we can compare these. Max, let's also include conv layer, okay? So we'll revisit that in a minute. Let's change this to one. What if you change your input, sorry, let's change this to, let's leave the number of channels the same. Let's change my image size to 256 by 256. All I'm trying to do is to show you that you cannot uh, import a pre-trained weights with different image sizes. It only works with convolutional layers. That's exactly what I wanted to demonstrate right now. Probably you know this, but again, let's go ahead and print the summary. And now you see this part should be the same, 1792, 36928, all the way up to here. But when you come down here, you flatten this and you have these many parameters. And what do we have before? These many uh, trainable weights, you see? These two are the same. These two are the same, 2359808. So for the convolution layers, the, the number of weights are the same. But when you come down to the dense layers, you see how I have different number of trainable right there. And that's exactly why you cannot uh, import, you cannot just use the uh, use the dense layers when you're doing transfer uh, transfer learning. It changes when your image size changes, even slightly. So we changed our input image size, not even the number of channels. Don't get confused. I'm just changing here from 224 to 256. So lesson number one, when you're doing transfer learning, uh, make sure when you're importing a, uh, importing a VGG or whatever it is, include top equals to false. What that means is, hey, import only up to the point where you are flattening and all this part, do not import that. Flattening, dense and dense and dense, which means you have to put together your own dense layers for your own application. But that's exactly what you wanna do anyway, because when you're doing importing a uh, trained model weights, you wanna use those as a starting point for your specific application. So this is great. Okay, we uh, uh, learned our lesson number one, uh, that you cannot change, uh, you cannot use different uh, input dimensions if you plan on using the dense layers. Okay, now let's move on to the next step here, which is, in fact, let me change the size of this. Uh, sorry about this, let me change the size of this. There's no easy way to make this readable for you and I don't want to digitally zoom in and zoom out when uh, I record this video, so I hope you'll see this. Okay, uh, now we are doing 224 by 224 by three input, include top equals to false, weights equal to image net. I'm slowly working my way towards how to import these weights for different dimensions. So if you're getting impatient, we'll get there pretty soon. So we already looked at this and this is the, this is the summary, okay? Now let's do exactly the same for 256 by 256 by three image and without the uh, top, so it should work for us and with same image net weights. This proves that we can use exactly the same image net weights no matter what your input size is. You see, we have same number of parameters, 14714688, 14714688, but then your input size is different, 224, 224, three, all the way down to 77512. If you go down, 256, 256, three, all the way down to 88512. So image dimensions and all of that is different, but the number of trainable parameters are exactly the same because the trainable parameters have nothing to do with your image size. They have to do with the kernel uh, uh, where your weights are residing, like I mentioned earlier. So let's do the same exercise even for uh, a larger image, 1024 by 1024 by three. So you can still use a pre-trained weights for the larger images like 1024 by 1024 by three. You see exactly same amount number of trainable parameters, except you end up with a different size, uh, you know, bottlenecked image. 
when you come down to it that's pretty much it these are all different sizes but again parameters are the same i think we now understand with all this repetition that yes parameters make sense what if i just go to uh one right there when you when you import this let's go ahead and try to import this and i said try because i know this is not going to work because it's going to throw an error saying the input must have three channels got an input shape of 224 by 224 by one so i'm pretty sure if you're watching this video because you tried transfer learning and it failed on grayscale images now we are slowly getting into that okay so we know that when you are trying to even with include top equals to false this is exactly this is this is it's throwing this error we know why because in the first layer instead of 1700 some weights or trainable parameters we have 600 some trainable parameters in a single channel image a good solution is why not just copy weights for all the layers except for the first convolution layer where we only have 600 right for that instead of taking all three channels how about averaging the weights for all the three channels and just taking the average of those for the first channel i hope this makes sense remember in three channel image here it's expecting a shape with three channels because the weights are represented in three channels you have three different kernels three different weights what if we just take those three different weights from our input in vgg19 or vgg16 here average those weights and use that for my first convolution layer and for all the other convolution layers it's exactly the same weights so let's just copy the same weights that's the strategy i'm going to show you and now that i told you the strategy the implementation is pretty straightforward how do you do that let's clear the screen and focus here so first let's go ahead and import our vgg model let's clear all the everything and start from scratch which means i may have to run these lines one more time not sure if i need these but let's go ahead and run them so we don't have to worry about them later okay so uh here what i'm going to show you is how to take a pre-trained vgg or whatever model which is trained on three channels and apply that to a single channel uh, images uh, or define a new model that uh, with transferred weights that works on a single channel image and then i'll show you on nine channel image okay so first of all let's go ahead and define our vgg model this is straightforward we know what uh, what that is it should have 17 714 if you go all the way to the top you have uh, uh, three channel input right this is what we're trying to take care of okay so far so good and our first convolution layer the input is this three channel image and this is the output which gives us 64 uh, parameters so far so good now let's go to the next step so first i would like to capture the configuration in a config in a dictionary right i mean when you do this vgg uh, when you do this uh, model.getconfig it captures the configuration into a uh, dictionary Right there if you open the dictionary you can see it defines input layer it defines the layers name and output layers if you open the layer you can see that there is an input layer right there and if you open that the shape is basically uh, uh, you know number of images uh, height width and three channels this is what we need to take care of we need to update this so that it uh, it has one channel right there and the weights that we want to provide so far so good so you understand that now we save the model we are uh we are going to update this dictionary and then uh create a new model based on that dictionary that's it okay uh so the next step is uh i'm defining here my uh, my height width and number of channels let's say my new image is going to be 1024 by 1024 by one not 224 by 224 by three anymore so let's go ahead and define my height width and number of channels and now uh, in my vgg config let's open this again let's look at layers and then config so let's open vgg config under layers i just opened for a reason i forgot i closed it under layers look at the zeroth one which is the first layer look at the config under zeroth one let's open this and look at config and under config look at batch input shape under config look at batch input shape you see none 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 and three which is basically 224 by 224 by three if you just have an input of 224 right there so this one we want to update this with our new height width and channels that's exactly what we are doing so that 
we are updating that with height with 1024, 1024, and this. So let's go ahead and do this and uh, VGG config. Let me open this one more time. One more time. Now you see 1024 by 1024 by one. So we defined a new configuration for our model. We haven't created a new model yet. Now we'll be creating a new model using this updated configuration, and then we have to populate the weights in that new model, okay? So step number one, we got this configuration right. Okay, now with that configuration, let's create a new model. I'm gonna call this VGG updated, and you're going to use your model. And how do you create your model? From the configuration VGG config. So this is my updated model. And when you go ahead and print the summary, it's going to print out 1024 by 1024 by one, and 1024, 1024 by 64, and blah, 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 all the way, new number of parameters, we know that anyhow, okay? And notice the 640 right there, and it's not 1700 anymore. Okay, we're not done. We just created a model. Right now, the weights that you have are all, let's go ahead and print the uh, weights for the convolution one block one, right? So what am I trying to do here? My uh, original model, convolution one block one, which is my VGG, right? VGG model, and just show you the weights. I just wanna prove that this updated model that we have has all random weights, okay? So first of all, let's go ahead and look at my original model weights. Let's go ahead and obtain that and go ahead and print that for, you see, I'm doing uh, three right there. Oh, by the way, this is important. Go ahead and look here, the size, three by three by three by 64. This three by three is the three by three kernel. This other three is three channels and the 64 is the 64 filters that we actually have. So three by three by three by 64. So when you look at the weights for that specific block, this is what you have. And when you mul multiply all of these, you get your 1700 something. Okay, let's look at the weights for the zeroth channel, first channel and the next one. So when you look at the weights for the zeroth channel, these are all the trained weights on ImageNet. This is what we want in our new model, but not all of these. This is the second one, this is the third one. These are the three channels. There are a couple of ways we can go about now. We can only take the zeroth channel weights and say, okay, that's wor that works for me. Or you can just average 0 0.42, 0 0.55, 0 0.48, and then 0 0.27, 0 0.34, and that. So you can average these and actually take that average as the weights for your single channel layer. Let's do that. So how do we do that? Well, first of all, let's actually uh, take our new model convolution block, the same convolution layer, and print out the weights for the zeroth channel. What do you get? All some random weights. You see, they are nowhere close to these. This is what training is. This is what machine learning training is. You feed it a whole bunch of images and go ahead and train it and train it and train it. And eventually it gets to this part where it represents something. Okay. Our goal is to replace these values with an average of these three. That's it. And uh, let's go ahead and uh, do that. And by the way, if I print one right there, I should get an error because right now we don't have that many weights. We only have one weight and you can look at that in our new model con block weights this shape of this one is three by three by one by 64 because we only have one channel and i'm beating this point even though the video is getting longer and longer i don't want to rush the video uh, uh and and not explain certain basics okay now let's go ahead and find the average i'm just defining a simple function to average the weights here it's going to all it's doing is get the weights and find the np dot mean along axis equals to minus two. What is that axis? Go count two from the end, uh, not 64, but this channel, the number of channels, uh, number of channels dimension. Along that dimension for the weights, go ahead and average it and reshape it. Okay, and then return my average weights. This is the function that I'm going to call when I get to that specific layer in my models. That's it. Now let's go ahead and get my updated uh, configuration right there. And uh, let us go ahead and, uh, uh, I mean, all I'm trying to do here is remember, we just defined our VGG updated. I'm just getting the configurations uh, as a dictionary and I'm going to update that configuration as you can see right there. Uh, 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 basically getting the layer names and update each layer in a minute. So let's go ahead and get the layer names. So VGG updated layer names. 
input 5, block 1, con 1, and so on. And we need to load the weights for all of these layers and update the weights for block 1, con 1 using our average weights function. Okay, so let us get down there. So first convolution layer name. What is the first convolution layer name? I don't know. Let's go ahead and extract it. And which is basically block one, con one, right? Okay, there's a reason why I am extracting that name. Now, we have all our layers. Now let's go through each and every one of these layer and update the weights. So how do you do that? First, we get weights, you know that, from the original VGG. And then we set weights, if I can find that. Where is my set weights? Uh, ta -da -ta 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 -ta. Set weights, sorry. Set weights in our new model. That's all. Okay, so for each of the layers in my original model, if layer name is in VGG updated layer names, it should be, what this is is if basically that name is this name, then if layer get weights is not equals to empty, which means if it's a convolution layer, because if it's a pooling or if it is input layer, you have no weights, right? If the layer has weights, if the get weights is not empty list, then your target layer is basically my VGG updated and get layer and layer dot name. Basically here, my target layer initially is my con one, block one, con one, and then block one, con two, and so on. So for this layer, what do we do now? If that name of that layer is my first convolutional name, which is block one, con one, this is where we need to find the average of all the weights. Then my weights equal to layer dot get weights, and my biases is this biases, right? So my biases is this biases. Then my single layer weights, sorry, single channel weights is my average weights of this weights. So I just extracted the weights, okay, from my uh, first convolutional layer right there, okay? And I'm averaging all of those weights. So I just wanna make sure you guys understand this specific step. Okay, and also go ahead and uh, uh, look at this layer dot get weights. And what is that layer? This layer, this layer is from our original VGG model. So far, we are not talking about the updated model. For the original VGG model, go ahead and get the weights and biases for that specific layer that's titled block one con one and go ahead and average the weights which is basically the weights that i want to use for my first convolution layer and then go to the target layer and set weights weights single channel and biases and here I am fixing the target layer to be uh, non-trainable. This is a trivial thing. You can set it as trainable if you want to train all the layers again with your new data. Typically, we fix that and we train only the uh, uh, dense layers. That's why I set this as false, but it's up to you. This part you can change. If that layer name is not block one con one, go ahead and set weights from your corresponding layer with the same name. So. What this for loop is doing is getting all the weights from VGG and updating all the weights in your new model with those ones, except if the name is block one con one, then go ahead and get the weights and average the weights and replace these. That's it. So if we, uh, where was the last? Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and run these lines. This should be pretty quick. Yeah. And now my new model con block one updated weights. I just, I'm, I'm, I'm just doing this so we can visualize it. So what are the updated weights? Did they actually update? You see right there, these are the updated weights. Is this an average of the previous ones? Let's quickly do that exercise. And uh, there you go. And by the way, if I print out the previous weights, you'll see that this is what we had, the random weights, and this is what we have today, right now after finding the average. Now, is that really the average? So if we just print these three out again, let's just do one quick exercise. Uh, the average of 
this, I don't know, let's do 0, 0 0.4295 plus 0 0.55 plus 0 0.48 equals to what 1.4595 1.4595 divided by 3 it's 0.4865 which is probably what we got when we printed this right 0 0.4865 0 0.48 yeah i mean so as you can see these weights now are updated so this is how you can tr do transfer learning it may sound like hey you took 40 minutes explaining this it's too complicated uh, um, as you can see i explained all the basics for those who are uh, coming with less background in this field uh, but you know or limited background in this field but uh, as you can see you can take a pre-trained model apply it to a grayscale images if you if you want to work with grayscale images all you need to do is just run this part that's it update the weights hopefully that makes sense and without making uh, this even longer let me just explain how you can take the do exactly the same exercise but instead of one weight what if you have uh, one channel what if you have nine channels what if your input image is 1024 by 1024 by 9 why would you have this well if you have satellite imagery or a mob or there are many many areas like even mri imaging you can have many uh, multiple modes multiple channels so what if you want to take uh, vgg 16 or resnet or any of these and apply that to multi-channel images so we follow exactly the same strategy except instead of finding the averages here instead of finding the average weights let's go ahead and keep the first three channel weights as is okay and then add additional channels in this example we'll be adding six additional channels because my input is a nine channel input and vgg has three channels right so let's add additional six channels and replace the weights with an average of all of these three you can replace weights on all the nine channels with the three. Now you're proficient with coding, you can do all of that. Now you know the strategy. But the, uh, what I have done is just leave the first three channels as is and the remaining six channels, just take an average of all these and fill the uh, fill them with those numbers. So that's exactly what I'm doing here. So uh, PGG model, let's go ahead and print this, all of this up to this point. So now if you look at VGG config right here, VGG config yeah uh in fact let's go ahead and uh, look at uh just a second sorry about this i just want to make sure we see things in a very clear way so let's run these one more time and end this video in about three minutes okay so we are with our nine channel image there you go okay I'm using the same names, that's why I restarted again. So VGG config right there. And again, when we go there, you know this, we have done this exercise. You see that 1024, 1024 by nine, because we replaced this input channel. Now we need to uh, replace the uh, random weights with our weights where we are getting this average. So for that, first of all, let's go ahead and define our VGG updated model and print out the model summary like we have done before. So there you go, 1024 by 1024 by nine is your input. The number of uh, parameters right there uh, is different. Everything else is exactly the same, okay? So let us get our uh, block one, con the first convolutional layer weights. And again, let's go ahead and print them. We saw that before, same numbers. Right? because nothing changed this is our uh, vgg model but for our new model let's go ahead and get the weights now if you look up here we have nine different uh, channels right there that's why you see three three nine and 64. so again the strategy is take the first three and then the next six replace it with the average and i can print a few of these again uh, these are all random weights so you'll see some different numbers and you can go up to like eight right there okay now that we know, let's go ahead and update our average with a different function. I call this average and copy weights. What does it do? It first of all gets the average and then copies the weights to the multiple channels. So the input for this again is weights, but in addition to that, number of channels to fill. How many additional channels do you want to fill? In our case, it's six. So uh, first of all, it finds the average weights as before this line is exactly same as before i showed you except now we need to add another one that says weights copied to multiple channel so how do we copy that first of all you get your average uh, weights right there and number of channels to fill okay 
So, uh, and for that, I'm using np.tile. np.tile is nothing but, hey, I have this, this, this array. Go ahead and copy that n number of times. And how do you, uh, where do you copy that? I mean, which one to copy number of channels to uh, that many times? Sorry, I'm trying to find words there. Do that six, six times using average weights, which we calculate right up there, okay? Basics, basics. Okay, let's run this line. And now let's do exactly what we have done before. Go ahead and get the updated configuration. Go ahead and get extract the layer names because we are using the layer names to iterate through each of those and update the weights. And also get the first convolution name, should be pretty much the same, lock one, con one. And for each layer in my original VGG model, go ahead and get the name. And if the name has, uh, if this layer has any weights, go ahead and define that as the target layer. And for each of uh, uh, these, uh, for that, if that layer name is equal to block one con one, extract the weights and get weights for the extra channels, which is basically, I'm, yeah, this is probably worth explaining a little bit because our weights with extra channels is basically your original weights, which is our three weights that we have, right? Plus, nine minus three, six weights that we are going to have, yeah, from this function and go ahead and concatenate those along axis minus two, right? That's it. So that's exactly uh, our extra, the new updated weights, and then go ahead and set those as the weights and remaining part is the same. So let's go ahead and do this. And we should be all most done. Now for the new model, let's go ahead and print the weights. The first one, Actually, let's go ahead and print the weights for our for our original VGG model so we can compare this. Okay, one, two, and three. These are the channel number zero, one, and two. And here, let's go ahead and for the updated model, let's go ahead and print for channel number zero. This should be exactly same as the channel number zero from before. Channel number one should be exactly same as channel number one from before, 0 0.55. I'm not even gonna print channel number two. Let's go ahead and print channel number three. Should be an average. We saw these numbers before. This is an average of 0, 1, 2 from BGG. Channel number four should be the same. Channel number five should be the same. And this is all uh, supposed to be the same. So now I have my new model. Now I can take my uh, uh, new model right there. Uh, sorry, if I can find it. Uh, my new model, new model, VGG updated, sorry, right there. Now I have a model that I can use to uh, for my new images with nine channels. Okay, again, uh, that was planned to be a 15 minute to 20 minute video, but ended up almost being like a 45 minutes to uh, 50 minutes. But again, I it, 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 the entire time is totally worth from my side and hopefully from your side, if you find this to be useful uh, information for you. Please like these videos and please subscribe to this channel if you haven't already done so. And if you have any questions about, hey, how do you do something? And if I see many people asking those, I'd rather reply that as a video like this. So please keep asking your questions, guys. Thank you.